Here is the bounce diagram. The dotted line corresponds to the end of the pulse, and it starts after 0.5 microseconds. The load is matched, so there's no reflection. If there was a reflection, you would reflect the dotted line in the exact same way as you would the solid line. Like this, for example, coming out this way, the dotted line would just be parallel to it. We're getting to the end of this part of the course relating to our first design challenge. So I want to give you a bit more information about what happened and also a bit more information about time domain reflectometry. After a thorough investigation, it was determined that faulty wiring most likely caused the TWA explosion. The aircraft had a type of wire called Ploy X, which it turns out the U.S. military had already partially replaced in their Navy F-14 aircrafts due to cracking. The aircraft also had another type of wire, extruded Teflon, going into the fuel tanks, and the manufacturer had discovered cracks in that type of wire over a 12-year period prior to 1996. In other words, investigators determined that the most likely source of the fuel tanks being ignited was a short circuit outside of the center wing fuel tank that allowed excessive voltage to enter it through electrical wiring associated with the fuel quantity indication system. That's a quote from the report released by the National Transportation Security Board, which took over four years to be published. As these issues were starting to come to light two years after the explosion, the FAA issued an urgent directive that older Boeing 747s must have their, wi their wing wiring inspected immediately. They were given 60 days for the ins inspection of wiring in 747s and 767s. Now I, won't, I don't want to cause you any worry if you ever get on an airplane. This wiring problem is much better understood now than it was in 1996, and the airlines have the capability to avoid these issues from happening again. And time domain reflectometry has played a major role as, and has become a very popular way of finding faults. But there is a strong need to be able to detect faults in general, even while an airplane is operating even today. For example, look at this list generated in 2006 that shows the most common types of faults experienced by U.S. Navy aircraft. 31% of the faults are caused by chafing. Now in between flights it would take prohibitively long to check all the wiring in an aircraft. It would be much better and more efficient to be able to actively check for faults at any time, even while the aircraft is flying. If we want to be able to do this, we will need to be able to send a very, very low voltage signal down a live wire while the aircraft is, is flying. This brings me to the final bit of information I'll give you about this design challenge. An even better option than traditional TDR is to use what is called spread spectrum TDR. SSTDR uses a sine wave modulated pseudo-noise sequence as the incident signal, which of course is much more complex than just turning on a voltage source and turning it back off again. This, in this case, the pseudo-noise signal can be very, very small compared with the aircraft signal on the wire, even down minus 20 dB, for instance. This is well below the allowable noise floor of the aircraft signal. If you then correlate the measured signal on the transmission line with a test copy of the pseudo-noise code, you can locate changes in the impedance on the transmission line as shown is in this example here for the same branched network we saw earlier. Remember how we said we shouldn't move any wires during or in between measurements? At first it may seem like we would never be able to perform SSTDR measurements on an airplane while it's flying. It may seem that way at first. Different components are vibrating, turning on, etc., etc. There's a lot of stuff going on that may, would change the measurement as we're making it. A major advantage of using SSTDR on live wires is that it can create and store its own dynamic baseline 
which can be used to eliminate the background conditions while the vibrations are occurring. So the major advantages of SSTDR is that we can use very low signal, much lower than you could with traditional TDR, and also we can get rid of all the background noise while it's the measurements being taken. Okay, I think we've come up with a suitable solution to the design challenge we posed at the beginning of this course, which you can see here. To finish up your in-class project notebooks for this part of the course, make a few notes about the possibility, possibility of using SSTDR on live wires. Also take a few minutes and look back at the very first notes you wrote in your in-class project notebook for this design challenge. What did you write? And how does it compare with what you know now? Finally, I'm listing here the course outcomes for this class, and highlighted in red are the topics that we've covered so far. In the next part, we're going to look at frequency domain analysis of transmission lines, and we'll, we'll uh, check off a few more of these things on the course outcomes.